I don't know whether the PCW show is really the greatest micro show on earth, but it was certainly packed the day I was there. And showing me some of the things which particularly interested him was journalist Chris Palmer. Chris, you've dragged me to the apricot stand. Why? Oh, primarily because it's British. How do I get oh, that's a good enough reason. What else? Well, it's the, it's the new apricot portable. Um, unfortunately, you still need a mains point to plug into. Yeah. And it's worth actually saying that the monitor over here is an addition which you can make to the system. Ah, the portable part is, is this bit you see so here. So you've got a liquid crystal display which would show everything a standard monitor Yeah, shows. I mean, you, you can use it as that. You don't need the monitor. So it's this and this. And am I right to think you no other wires apart from the yes. main lead? Um, certainly. The, the keyboard yes. itself communicates with the, the main part of the computer via infrared in the same way that your TV or video controller yeah. would. Well, that makes it very neat, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Another nice factor about this is the mouse. This one has actually been primarily designed to be used handheld, and it's also infrared controlled, so you can move about the room or your desk while yeah. you're using it. Or sit in an easy chair. Or sit in an easy nice. chair. Now tell me about this liquid crystal display. Well, this is one of the biggest liquid crystal displays that's yet become available on any computer. The same sort of display you'd get in a washer or a calculator, yeah. only much, much bigger. So it means that you have a usable area to work on on the screen. Ah, now this is more my level. Oh, yes. I like it. Colours and shapes, but great for kids. Yeah, absolutely. I do. What it actually is, is a, a touch-sensitive pad which interfaces into and the major micros. Um, and so, as you say, great for kids because from an early age, they're not really that happy with a keyboard. And so you've got something here which you've got colors and shapes on, which a kid can relate to and actually use and interact with the computer. At the moment, it's compatible with five of the leading micros. And this is uh, Apple's latest addition to their range, the Macintosh. And what I wanted to show you is a, a rather wonderful piece of software that's running on it, which is a visual database. What do you mean by that? Is there's pictures of houses instead of words? Yes, I mean, what they've done is, obviously your, your visual senses are a lot stronger than looking at words or numbers. So if, if we want the information on that particular house there, yeah. we point to it and press the button and it marks that house and we ask it to link. Yeah. So it's now going to link through to some more detailed information on that house. Let's say you're interested particularly in the size of the living room. So once again, you point at the living room and it would highlight it there on the screen and you now ask for info on the living room and now it actually comes up and it says right the living room is what you're looking at it's 200 square feet it's got two closets and six windows are you telling me that this is an ordinary personal computer mm, it's an ordinary home computer and it's got this rather wonderful keyboard which sits on top of it it's just a, it's just an attachment. Yeah, it's, it's a mechanical oh, keyboard. Yeah. And the way it actually works is when you press a key here, it's actually pressing the key on the keyboard underneath it. But look, for someone like me, who I can't read music or play music, what, how much fun would I get out of this? Well, one of the nice features, because it's a software-based system, you can actually tell it to remember the notes you play. So you've got an inbuilt sequencer which will remember what you play on the keyboard. Ah, and since you've, we've got the notes here written down, so if I read them out to you, right, you're ready. Go at inputting this. G. This is where have all the flowers gone, incidentally. Right. G, A, G, F, E, D, C. That didn't sound like where have all the flowers gone to me. No, but one of the other nice features about it is you can actually play it back in the time by just tapping one key. So if we now ask it to remember the time, um, I'll attempt to actually play it back as it should be. And if you hit it again, actually play back, remembering the time you put into it. 25,000 pounds. Let's put the lid on it, Chris, quickly. A lot of money. I don't think I've ever seen so much money in my life. Right, where's the... Oh, no, don't see. I've lost the key. <laughs> oh, you've got the key. Great. Right, now, 25,000 pounds, that is some prize, isn't mm. it? I know, I mean, the oil companies do it, the newspapers do it, but is this the first time that a computer firm's done it? This amount of money for a computer firm, that is actually the prize um, for the first person to solve the adventure called Eureka. Now, Eureka is a multi-part adventure game. There are five actual adventures and five arcade games, and you have to complete each one in sequence before you can actually get to the end and claim the money. Right, so you don't just win like that? No, so it's, it's a long slog. Right, so where do I get a game? Well, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait till the 31st of October, which is when they actually become generally available.